Praise the Lord. Genesis chapter 13, and let's begin reading uh, in verse number 5. The Bible says, Now Lot, who was moving about with Abraham, that's his uncle, uncle and nephew there, also had flocks and herds uh, and tents. But the land could not support them while they stayed together, for their possessions were so great that they were not able to stay together. So quarreling began to happen between Abraham's herds and also Lot's herds. And also to put, put all that, the icing on the cake there was that the Canaanites and the Perizzites were also living there. So there was really no room left in the land. So Abraham said to Lot, um, let's not have any quarreling between us anymore or between our herders and mine, for we are too close of relatives. Okay, so he comes in as a peacemaker. How many know God loves a peacemaker in a family. So he says, he says, we're close friends. Verse number nine, it says, is not the whole land before you? So let's part company. And he told his nephew, Lot, if you go to the left, then I'll go to the right. And if you go to the right, then I will go to the left. Father, bless your word today. Have your way in Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen. you can go ahead and be seated here this morning. How many appreciate our music ministry today? Yeah? Yeah. Music matters, man. Music matters in an atmosphere and building a church. And so we really appreciate all their hard work. In this portion of scripture that we read, we kind of just read a little snapshot um, of the bigger picture of what God is up to concerning Abraham. And if you were to kind of go back to chapter 12 of Genesis you'll see that there's a conversation between God and Abraham. And God basically tells Abraham, I need you to leave your current comfort zone and I need you to go to a land in which I'll show you when you get there. And Abraham willingly, you know, doesn't have Google Maps. He doesn't have an app on his cell phone. He doesn't have, that was funny, come on guys. <laughs> doesn't have any of that. And, and so he simply gets command from God and then, and then goes, and he takes off on his journey to the promise. And I think that that's important for us to understand here today, because as he's making his journey to his promise, uh, him and his family, they come across uh, another city. And in this city, uh, the Bible tells us that, that, that uh, Abraham tells his wife, uh, Sarah, he says, listen, as we enter into this, into this city, because you're so pretty, and because you're so fine, and because you're so hot, we're going to tell them that you're not my wife, that you're my sister. Because if they find out you're my wife, they're going to kill me, keep you, and break up the family. And so that's the plan, and they go through with it. And the Bible says that, sure enough, Pharaoh seen her, Sarah, and he calls her over, and he makes her his wife. And the minute he did that, uh, the Bible says that curses began to fall upon Pharaoh and his household, and things began to happen, and diseases began to happen, and plagues began to hit his family. And then it dawns on Pharaoh that this guy lied to me. Abraham lied to me. This isn't his sister. It's actually his wife. And so I need to get her, him, and everybody that has anything to do with him out of this city. So what he does is he gives them some departing gifts, if you will. In other words, he basically tells them, pays them to get out of there. And as he pays them to get out of there, Lot kind of like wins the lot, uh, excuse me, Abraham wins the lotto, if you will. And so he takes off out of there and, and he's blessed and, you know, uh, things are happening for him. And, and he's, you know, uh, how many know sometimes on your way to your promise, you're going to run into some snags? But Abraham didn't let his snag stop him. You notice how he kept going. And, he, and, and God somehow, some way blessed his life. And... That's where we pick up the story here today in Genesis chapter, chapter 13 is, is the land wasn't big enough for them. And so they began quarreling, they began fighting, and, 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 and to make matters worse, the Canaanites were there, the Perizzites were there, they had all the good land, and it was a bad situation. And so Abraham begins to tell his, son, uh, his nephew, he says, listen, man, uh, I'm going to let you go first. I'm going to let you pick which way you want to go. If you want to go left, I'll go right. If you want to go right, then I'll go left. And Lot, you know, the nephew Lot. How many know those nephews, man? Sometimes they, 
He, 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 he didn't hesitate. He said, I'll take that one. I'll take the good one. I'll take the good one. And, and, and he goes that way, and Abraham settles for the not-so-good piece of land. But Abraham didn't care because Abraham had a promise. Abraham didn't let his circumstances and all the ugly land and all the rocks and all the stop him because he knew he had, he knew he had a promise. And that's a whole other sermon this morning. But let's talk about Lot for a minute. See, Lot didn't really understand that the decision that he was making was the decision that was going to mess him up and it was going to also mess the destiny of his family up. If you read that portion of scripture when Abraham asked him which way you want to go, Lot didn't even pray on it. Lot just looked and went in a certain way. Listen, Victory Outreach, it's important that we understand here today, this is kind of what I want to get into you right now, is, is, is Lot made a decision that on the surface was good. Lot made a decision on the surface that had temporary results. But it turned out to be the worst decision for himself and also his family. Listen very closely. Choices that we make, we must always make them with eternity in mind. So whenever you're making a major life choice for you and your family, concerning your family, don't always make them with financial gain as the motive. Or with what you see in the natural or fast results. Talk to me a little bit here today. See, that's what Lot did, and he didn't even pray on it. He didn't even filter it through the will of God for his life. And he moved into a direction, and guess what? If you continue to read it, he moved into a direction where Sodom and Gomorrah were. And if you keep reading on, he had his tent close to Sodom and Gomorrah. And then eventually his tent was facing Sodom and Gomorrah. And pretty soon his tent was in Sodom and Gomorrah. You got to watch what your eyes are looking at. Because eventually your, your body's going to follow your eyes. You ever see that movie Couples Retreat? And there was a married guy in it that he just wanted to be in that singles island, didn't he? Like from the moment he stepped on Couples Island, his heart was not to, to, for his marriage, but his, his, his heart and his eyes were on. He's seen the lights of that island. Boof, 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 boof. <laughs> he heard the parting and the going on and he wanted to be there. And one day, right, towards the end of the movie, he found himself over there. Well, that was Lot's situation. See, anytime your eyes are on something, it won't be long until your body follows it. And pretty soon, <laughs> uh, Lot was embracing the lifestyle of Sodom and Gomorrah. You ain't hearing me today. But thank God, hear me and hear me close, thank God that he had an uncle that loved God, he had an uncle that had a promise, he had an uncle that went to church, he had an uncle that, that loved the Lord, he had an uncle that didn't have it all together, because remember he just lied, he lied to kick it, but God even turned his lying, well, I better be careful there, had mercy on him. For the journey. Come on, somebody, because he had a promise. And we see that, we see if you keep reading on, uh, uh, that, that Lot began to cry out for his nephew. And the Bible says two angels came, came to Abraham. And they began to tell Abraham that, yes, your nephew, the burden you feel is true. Your, 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 your nephew is in Sodom and Gomorrah. And those same two angels went over there, personally went over there. Genesis 19, 17 says, as, as, as they brought Lot and his family out of there, they personally told him, escape for your life and don't look back. Somebody say, don't look back. Stop looking back. Let that be a stern warning for you and I here today. Don't look back. You want your family saved? You want to be saved? Stop looking back. Too many of us, we're constantly finding ourselves looking back. Come on, somebody. And we know the story, right? Lot's wife looked back. And she turned into a pillar of salt. And it was over. But if you keep reading, it's just like this drama in the story. I just kept, I go, man, do you think you have drama? Pick up the Bible. You'll feel a whole lot better, really. In more ways than one. 
And so the two daughters that Lot had, they began to look at their future as not being so bright. And so what happened was, is, is, is they knew the mom had died, and they knew everybody in Sodom and Gomorrah was dead. So they started thinking, what's our legacy and our family lineage going to look like? So they took matters into their own hands, and the Bible says they got their father drunk. And I don't have to get into that. And the Bible says both daughters became pregnant and had babies. One of them gave birth to a son named Moab, and one of them gave birth to a son called Ammon. Later on would be known as the tribes of the Moabites, and the other one would be known as the tribe of the Ammonites. Number one and number two biggest enemies of God. And let me just, we're going to stick to the Moabites. Come on. The Moabites were bad. I mean, they were bad, bad, bad people. I mean, I could go on and on and on about the Moabites, but the Bible even says that one time the king of Moab stood in, on top of his balcony and threw his own child over the balcony because they believed in baby sacrifices and they believed by doing that that he was going to go ahead and, and be able to uh, sacrifice to the demons there. And as a matter of fact, as you keep reading it, four Old Testament prophets, stay with me now, four Old Testament prophets preached uh, basically against and cursed the Moabites. God himself even said one time, he said, don't even allow a Moabite in this temple. Don't even let them in the parking lot. Don't even let them get close to the temple because they are a cursed people. But yet... You guys are getting serious. But yet, someone say, but yet. Yes. When you read Matthew chapter 1, matter of fact, once you turn there, Matthew chapter 1, and we're going to begin reading in 1, and that is basically the genealogy of Jesus Christ. Matthew chapter 1, turn there real quick, because so I'm going to start reading it in a minute. Matthew chapter 1, verse 1, the Bible says, this is the genealogy of Genealogy of Jesus, the Messiah, the son of David, and also the son of Abraham. Abraham was the father of Isaac. Isaac was the father of Jacob. Jacob was the father of Judah and his brothers. Judah was the father of Perez. Perez and Zerah, whose mother was Tamar. Tamar was the father of Hezron. Hezron was the father of Ram. Ram was the father of, ben of Abinadab. Abinadab was the father of... I don't even know how to say these names... Nashon. Nashon was the father of Salaman. Salaman was the father of Boaz. Boaz was the father of Rahab. Or the mother of Rahab. Boaz was the father of Obed, whose mother was who? Ruth. That's what we're going to... Was Ruth. Ruth uh, was... There's a whole book dedicated to Ruth's life when you read it. Awesome book. Great. But... When you first or were first introduced to, to, to Ruth, she's known and introduced as a Moabite woman. So how is this, how is this Moabite woman that came from immorality, that came from curses, that came from, from an ugly family lineage, uh, a dark past, a, a future that was not bright. How would this woman, Ruth, make it into the genealogy of our Lord Jesus Christ? How does that happen? How would she, off a bad past, be able to have such a bright future? Well, I'll tell you how. She, she, was, she was in Moab, and uh, there was a woman named Naomi. And Naomi had a husband and two sons, and because of a famine, they left Bethlehem and came over to Moab, desperate. And as they were there in, uh, in Moab, one of Naomi's sons fell in love with a Moabite woman. Come on, somebody. Hey. And because the famine didn't really end there, all the men basically died. And Naomi, Ruth's, Ruth's mother-in-law, says, listen, there's nothing here for me. Like, my future has been wiped away. All hopes and dreams of my family are wiped away. I came here for a better life. 
I came here for a better tomorrow. I came here to get my family right, and nothing has gone in my favor. Why should I be here in Moab? And she basically said, I'm going back home. At least I know there's misery there. At least I know that there's failure there. At least I know that there's, there's what, what to expect when I go back home. And I love what Ruth said, her daughter-in-law, the Moabite. She said, she said, she said, hey, 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 don't, don't leave without me. Don't you dare step out of this city without me. And she told her, wherever you go, Naomi, I'll go. And, and wherever your people are, that's where my people will be. And then she said something powerful that broke a curse, I feel, in her family past. She said, Naomi, and your God shall be my God. And I think in the supernatural, something broke. I think when she said those words, your God will be my God, something supernaturally broke in her family history. All curses were broken. All sin was broken. All bad was broken. You ain't hearing me today. All those things were turned around, and from one minute to the next, something happened inside of her future when she said, your God will be my God. Come on, somebody. Some of us need to hear that today because you've been living in your past for too long. You've been letting your past determine your future. You ain't hearing me today. You've been, you've been letting people remind you of your past. You've been letting family remind you of your past. You've been letting friends remind you of your past. You've been letting yourself, oh, I'll never change. Oh, it'll never happen. Oh, I'll never go. Oh, I'll never. You're living in your past, but Ruth is speaking to you and I today. See, because behind Ruth was, 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 was a lineage of, of, of Lot. Lot was back there. Her, 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 her great her grandfather was back there. And he was a bad, bad choices, uh, bad past, uh, cursed forever. Come on, somebody. The Moabites were cursed. Her bloodline was cursed. You ain't hearing me today, man. I'm trying to help you out. But you act like you want to be back there. <laughs> Are you just kind of... Marinating on it? I don't know. <laughs> yes, you got help, to help me out today. Yeah, because this is huge for us here today. Because Ruth is saying, you may have Lot behind you, but she's in the genealogy of Jesus. So Lot behind me, Jesus in front of me. So, so, so I want to leave my past behind. Stop reminding me who I used to be. I don't talk the same. I don't act the same. I don't pray the same. I don't praise the same. I don't worship the same. I don't live the same. My lifestyle's different now. I'm a different man. I'm a different, you ain't, I'm a different person. And all because I said the name of, of, of God and Jesus the whole, in my life. Listen, my family's not the same, man. My family is not the same. We come from a lineage just like many of you. Alcohol, broken families, broken marriages, infidel, all, all these just, just, just horrible, horrible stuff. And you would think that we would have ended, we were ended up there. Oh, but one day, one day, we had an Abraham in our family. And that, 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 that Abraham in our family said, hey, I'm not going to just... Let my family members be stuck in Sodom and Gomorrah. I'm sorry. I get excited. I get excited because my family has been set free. I mean, it's been my, my kids, my children will never have to be in a jail cell ever. My kids will never be stuck in a bar with alcohol on their lip. My kids will. will never be running the streets. We'll never be. Come on, somebody. Because why? Because, because, because Ruth has spoken. I think she's speaking to us today, man. Letting us know, stop looking back. Come on, tell your neighbor, stop looking back. See, Ruth married a guy. Ruth went with Naomi. She, she, she went back to Bethlehem. And things changed for her. She said, God, your God will be my God. And all of a sudden, something broke, and her direction changed. Yeah, that's how powerful it is. 
I mean, she went over to Bethlehem and she didn't have a job. She was a Moabite. No one was going to hire her. She had a record. She was. See the reaction? You get no job. I'm going to go, huh? And you say record of victory average. You go, oh, yeah. See, I got to come time, bring it, bring it, make it relevant sometimes. But what did her mother-in-law tell her? Her mother-in-law said, well, the only thing I can tell you is you got to go, you know, you got to go, you got to go. They do allow non, non-Hebrews to get behind the reapers as they're reaping all the good stuff. As they're reaping all the good stuff, they do allow you to get the scraps and the leftovers. So you can do that to survive if you have to. And how many know God will put you through a season of leftovers and scraps sometimes? He'll put you through those seasons, you know. But, but, but she did it. She said, hey, I, I already know my destiny's changing. I already know things are moving in that direction. And so, hey, if I have to, well, I got to do what I got to do. And, and that's what she did. And pretty soon she came back. A few days she'd come back with nothing until, until, until Boaz showed up. I don't know how fine Boaz was, single sisters. But when he came riding up on that, on that horse... He got all, he got everyone's attention. And he said, he, he, he came rolling up to his land and he seen the reapers reaping and he seen the, non, the non-Hebrews back there getting their leftovers. And he, 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 he noticed, he noticed, he noticed. He noticed. He said, hey, I've never seen her before. <laughs> who, who was she? And then... And then she probably looked at him and they were having lunch, lunch break in the cafeteria. And Boaz brought all the reapers, the good reapers. The reapers, let me tell you right now, these reapers, they didn't leave nothing behind. They were professional reapers. So if you happened to get something, then you were blessed. But he told all the reapers, he said, we're going to have a union meeting. Come here. You see that girl over there? See that girl over there? Like, 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 would you mind just leaving her a little extra corn? A little extra, just, just do it for me. And, and how many know God will show favor on your life, man? If you're, yeah, that's a whole nother sermon, but you know, hey, if you're being faithful in the little, you'll get, you'll get, you'll get, you'll get the notice of, and he'll look down on you and he'll just throw him a little, you're, just a little extra. Stop stressing off Christmas. No extra. You made it through last year, didn't you? You're going to make it through this year, so. You don't got to sell your car. You don't got to max out your cards. You don't got to do all that. Just let me get you. Just come to Victory Outreach. Get some, get some toys on there. I'm going to throw you a little extra. A little, little blessing here. Some manudo after church. Come on, somebody. Boom. I'm blessed. And the Bible says that she, 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 she started following them. She started following the reapers, and all of a sudden, she went from just a little cup to two bagfuls. And she came back home with those two bagfuls. Naomi looked at her sideways. She said, where'd you steal all that from, girl? She said, I didn't steal it. God has, God has turned my not enough into more than enough. The moment I said yes to your God, the moment I opened up my life to your God, the moment I said yes to God, things began to change in my life. I can't explain it. I don't have words to explain it. I can't preach it. I can't sing it. I can't even get the word. But all I know is when I let Jesus in my heart, something supernaturally began to happen, not only to me, but to my family and my destiny. I think you need to take a praise break right now. Some of you need to take a praise break right now. Because God has been too good for you to just be sitting there and not and pretending that he hasn't been good to you. He's saved your marriage. He saved your children. He saved... He's been too good to you. If you're here breathing... You guys are making my high blood pressure go up, man. Making my high blood pressure go up, so... I don't know how else to say it to you, but I think the message is clear today. Yeah, stop looking back. Ruth said, there's lot is behind me, but Jesus is in front of me. 
Darkness is behind me, but brightness is in front of me. Curses are behind me, but redemption, you ain't hear me, it's in front of me. I don't care how your yesterday was, my friend, it, it, or how bad your family history was, stop looking back. If you will stop looking back, your present and your future will be better than your yesterday. I don't know how many regrets you have. I don't know how bad your past may be, but what I do know is I know who holds your future. If you ask anyone in this portion of Scripture, or in the Bible, I should say, that if they would have thought the Messiah would come out of this woman, out of a Hebrew man and a Moabite woman, they would have said what? Absolutely not. Absolutely nothing could come good out of Ruth. Ruth's, Ruth's, Ruth was headed, headed, she's all bad. I mean, just look at what her father did. Look at what her mother did. Look at what her aunts did. Look at how they lived. They, they lived immorally. They were dark. They were bad people. They were sacrificing children. They were, they were worshiping idols. But yet, in God's mercy, somehow, some way, he took all of that ugliness and he turned it into a brighter future. Your future is brighter than your past, my friend. And all of us need to just praise God today because he's given you a better tomorrow. See, the enemy wants you to give up on your family. That's what he wants you to do. Do you know that? He wants you to give up on your family. He wants you to say, they'll never change. He wants you to say, nothing, nothing good could come out of this family, God. Well, he saved you, didn't he? You weren't the choir boy. Choir girl, sister. Most likely, we were the most unlikely. We didn't choose those yet. Because he wanted to use you that if he could change you. Oh. Jesus. Looking back, there was sin. But looking forward, there was redemption. Looking back, there was curses. But looking forward, there were blessings. Looking back, there was judgment. But looking forward, there was mercy. Looking back, there was Lot. But looking forward, there was Jesus. Listen, I don't care what's behind you. Because Jesus is now in front of you. I want you to stand. I want you to stand. I want you to stand. I'm not going to labor it too much. I think I've said, it, said what I needed to say. What's my point today? My point is that, 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 that Ruth is telling us here today. Stop dwelling on what's behind you. Because I'm about to bring something brand new to you. about to change the course of the destiny of your family today. Oh yeah, it's that simple. You say, man, that's a heavy statement, Pastor. Yeah, I know it's a heavy statement, but I stand here today as a witness to you that God will take the least likely. He will take the one no one expects anything out of. And if they say yes to God, then you could actually change generational curses you could actually change the dark past you can actually change the course not only your destiny but your children and their children and everyone else that's connected to you some of you are, could be off to a good start today some of you are be, be just starting a family you could just 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 be just be getting ready to get married you can, you can, you can, you can, you could have a good start now. Then there may be some of you say, Pastor, I don't know, man, this thing's a little too late for me. Well, I'm here to say, no, it's not too late. But that's a lie. Because it's never too late. It's never too late. My pastor told me that as long as you have breath, 
you have hope. So lift up your hands today. I got a few minutes. We're gonna Are do an altar call. Are you hurting and broken within? is calling come on just lift up your hands and close your eyes have you come to the end of yourself do you thirst for a drink from the well Jesus is calling oh oh, oh, oh come to it's time. the altar it's time the Father's arms are open wide your past behind you. Was bonds with Throw away the key. The blood Get ready Jesus for a future. Christ, oh, come to Listen, if you're new, the altar, Jesus, the I want you to slip out of your seat. There's someone new by you, and you know they're new. I want you to bring them to the altar. If you're in this church and you say, Pastor, that's me. I need to break the curse. Get me. The altars are open. If I'm going to pull teeth. If you want your family destiny changed, if you want to break those generational curses, get off your seat. Get on the bed.